Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to do four next loops in Access VBA. How to count the occurrences of a specific character inside a string. Today's question comes from Paul in Houston, Texas, a Silver member. Paul asks, I get emailed a text list of products every day. Next to each product is a plus sign if that product is new. I need to know both of these counts to put in my daily report. Is there a way I can just copy and paste this text into Access and have it count the number of lines and the number of plus signs it finds? And Paul sent me an email, a copy of what he gets from his distributor. He doesn't really do anything with that data except he needs a count of the total number of products on that list and how many of them are new. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn a for next loop so we can loop through that whole string of characters and we're going to count the number of plus signs and we're going to count the number of new line characters. At the end of each of those lines there's something called a new line character and I'll show you what that is in just a minute. Okay, here I've got a blank access database. Let's create a form. Create form design. Here's a big open blank form. I'm going to turn on my ribbons here and let's come down. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be quite that big. Let's resize this guy. Now this form is not going to have any data in it. We're just going to let Paul paste in here the text that he gets. So let's give it a splash of color. I always have to put some kind of color behind my forms. Let's go with uh, light blue like that. And we'll want a big text box in here. So let's go to design and grab a text box and drop it right there like that. Just big enough to paste this stuff and I'm going to delete that label. All right, we'll just save this as my, uh, I don't know, paste form, whatever you want to call it, paste F. All right, let's see what we got. And yeah, we can turn off the navigation bars and all that stuff. That's, well, let's do it because it's going to annoy me <laughs> if I have to look at them. Let's go into the form properties. Some of you haven't seen this, I know. Form properties, we're going to turn off scroll bars because we don't need them. We're going to turn off, I'm on the format tab, by the way. We're going to turn off um, the, let's see what do we got here, the navigation buttons because there's no records and the record selectors. That makes this form look a little more like something that doesn't have any data in it, see? Okay, I've got Paul's data right here. Now, this looks easy to do by eye, right? I can just very easily see here there's seven records and there's three pluses, but the record list that he sent me was 4,000 items long. And yeah, you could paste this into Excel and figure out how many rows there are, and there are some other tricks you could do to, uh, to count the number of pluses. But he is using Access already, and he wants to just take this, copy it, paste it into his database, and then hit a button and just get his counts. And he is, he is actually saving this information in his database too, so we'll kill two birds at one stone. The key here also is it gives me an opportunity to teach you how to do four next loops because that's something that you should learn how to do. I like to make Access do my work for me. I got another video I'm going to do soon that um, I get emailed personally. I get emailed information from my uh, my bank every day, and it's got you know balances and stuff on there. I'm going to show you how to copy all that information and paste it into your database and pull out the bits of information that you need, like opening balance, closing balance, and stuff like that. That'll be a future video. And you'll need this stuff to do that stuff. So we're going to learn four next loops first. So let's go into design view. Let's drop a command button on here. So go up to your design ribbon and find the command button and drop it right there. The wizard will start up. Cancel it. There is no wizard for this. Okay. Change the caption to, uh, you know, go or count or whatever you want to call it. Right click build event. Now a little window might pop up if you're new to this that says what kind of builder do you want? You're going to pick the code builder. All right. Now we're inside of command two. click. That is command button two. It's actually the second object on the form. Yeah, we should give it a good name. Alex is going to yell at me if we don't. All right. Close that. Come back into here. If you don't know who Alex is, you haven't been watching my videos long enough. Open up this button and let's change the name of this to my count button. Okay, count button. Now, see these little tips and tricks I try to put in the, the tech help videos. Right click, build event. That puts us back in here. Now I'm in private sub count button click. Are you happy, Alex? Okay. So before we count the number of characters in that, uh, in that box, let's first learn how a for next loop works. Okay, first you dim a variable called x or whatever you want to call it. All right, and I'm going to make this a long integer. All right, that says, give me a bit of information. 
Uh, we're going to call it X, we're going to save it in the computer's memory, and it's a long integer. All right, X can be whatever I want. It's not a field on a form, it's not a field in a table, it's just some memory variable. It's, it's some bit of computer memory that's going to hold some information. Take my Access Developer 1 class if you want to learn all the nitty gritty and the, the tips and tricks uh, of Visual Basic stuff. But I'm going to teach you a little bit here and there in these Tech Help videos. But if you want the comprehensive course from A to Z, take my developer courses. I know lots of you from the emails that I get like to learn little bits of information here and there, and that's what these tech help videos are perfect for if you don't want to take a, a full long course, and that's fine. Now let's just make this value x count from 1 to 5 and then do something. How about throw up a message? All right, so I'm going to say right here for x equals 1 to 5. All right, and then at the bottom I'm going to put next. In some older programming languages you have to put next x because you can have loops inside of loops. Those are called nested for loops. And the, uh, the Visual Basic editor needs to know which, which loop you're ending. But, but VBA, Visual Basic for Applications, which is what comes with Access and Word and stuff, you don't need to put that variable name there. In fact, I'm pretty sure it gives you an error message if you do. Let's see. No, it'll let you. Okay, but you don't have to. It automatically assumes, if you have nested ones, that the first next is for the innermost loop and so on. Okay. Having, having one loop exit before the other one does is not considered proper coding. All right, so what are we gonna do for this one to five? We're gonna say message box X. That's all, just pop a message on the screen and show me what that number is. All right, save this, come back out here. I'm gonna close my form and reopen it. I always like to get in the habit of closing these and reopening them. Let's hit the count button. All right, one, two, three, four, five. That's all. That's all that code does, all right? And now you know how to program a for an X loop. All right, now how about instead of message boxing it, how about we put that value inside this box here? Let me, let me shrink this down. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna resize access like this, and I'm gonna resize my code window so we can see them both at the same time in the same video window. How's that? Because this code's not gonna be giant big, and this form's not gonna be much bigger than that, so this should work good, so I don't have to keep flipping back and forth. I love recording in HD now. I used to record in a window that was about this size before. I used to have to keep flipping around. Okay, so instead of popping this value up on the screen, let's put this value inside this box. All right, first we need to know what the name of this box is. Let's see, design view. Let's open up the properties for this box. All right, that's text zero. I don't like text zero. Let's just call it, I don't know, box one. Let's call it box one. All right, close that. Now I'm gonna come over here and say box one equals X, just like that. Save it. Well, let's close the box and reopen it and hit the button. Boom, and there's just a five in there. Why is that? Well, what we did was we looped from one to five. We set box one equal to one, then box one equal to two, then box one equal to three, right? We basically replaced the value in box one each time we looped. If you want this to say one, two, three, four, five in it, you have to add it to the value of what's in that box. So first we'll start off up here and we'll say box one equals, oops, excuse me, box one equals nothing. That's an empty string. Okay, now in here we'll say box one equals box one and X. That's called string concatenation. I've got a whole separate video on how that works. So if you don't know how adding strings together works, watch my video on string concatenation. I'll put a link in the description below the video. All right, now let's hit the button. Look at that, one, two, three, four, five. We've added to the value of the box each time. Now knowing this, now we can reverse this and count the number of characters that are in this box. Instead of adding stuff to it, we can count what's in it. The same, pretty much the same way with a loop. We can loop through each of the characters in here. Okay, let's drop some text boxes down here so we can see some values. Memory variables are nice for little things like these counters. In fact, you can make these text boxes too instead of making the memory variables. Let's put some text boxes on here. One of the reasons I don't like shrinking this sometimes is because you lose your, uh, your menus, but that's okay. All right, drop a text box down here. Let's call this one total characters. All right, and let's go black. Easy to see, okay. The total characters up here. Now, how do we get that? Well, uh, I just accidentally clicked there. That created a breakpoint. I don't want to do that. I cover that in a different class. That was an oops. Okay. First thing we're going to do is get the total number of characters. All right. Now, this isn't a memory variable. It's down here. It's a field. All right. It's in this guy. So let's name it total care. That's the name of that text box. 
All right, right, that, right down here. This guy here is called total care. All right, so I don't need to dim it. It's not a memory variable. I'm going to say total care equals the length of, what is that, box one. Okay, let's put this after the loop right down here just for now. Okay, so we'll run the same loop here, and then we'll count up how many total characters there are. Now, this is a function, len, that already basically does that loop. All right, it counts the number of characters in there. I should get a five. All right, let's check it and see. All right, let's save this and reopen it and hit the button. Boom. All right, it looped one to five, and then total care counted the number of records, or excuse me, the number of characters in that box. Doing databases, I'm so used to saying records, right? The number of records on a table or a query or a form. Now, let's say I've got data up there, like the set of data I was emailed. Now I want to count in here. Let's let's do the easy one first. Let's count the number of pluses that are in there. Okay, so let's change our code a little bit. Total care will determine that first. So I'm going to move that up here. Now I know the total amount of characters in this box up here. All right, I no longer want to set the value of box one. The user's pasting stuff in here for me. And I'm going to loop from one to total care. Okay, so loop from one, the first character, all the way to the last character in that box. Now we're gonna change what happens in this loop. Inside this loop, I wanna count up the number of pluses. All right, so let's add another text box down here. Copy, paste. All right, pluses. Let's just call it plus found. Make it easier. I uh, I like to get in the habit, I started doing this recently, I like to get in the habit of making all my variables and stuff and my field names singular. So instead of pluses, this will be plus. That's why the total characters, I just put total care. All right, so for pluses found, I'm just gonna call the name of this plus found, like that. Okay, plus found. Now, over here, I'm going to add up those pluses. It's always a good idea to initialize your values, initialize your variables or your fields. So I'm going to say plus found equals zero. As of the time this loop starts, give it a starting value. All right, because if you don't and you run this more than once, this guy's already got a value in it. So each time we run this, we want to make sure this loop starts at zero. And right inside of here, let me close this so you can see it. It's a little easier if you can see the values. All right, let me copy. I got this stuff sitting over here in Notepad. Let me copy that and drop it back in there. All right, now in here, I'm going to check to see what the current character that I'm on is. Okay, how did we do that? All right, we need another variable for that. Let's call it C, dim C as a string. What is C going to be? C is going to be the specific character that I'm on. How do we determine that? Here's another function for you. It's called the mid function. And I cover, there's a bunch of string functions. There's left, there's right, there's mid. There's a bunch of other ones, a length function. I cover those in my classes. Again, I've got some free videos on YouTube about how to do a lot of this stuff. I'll put links below this video so you can go watch those lessons too if you want to learn how these, these string videos work. All right, but watch this now. C equals mid box one comma x comma one. Let me explain what that is. All right, if you look at the IntelliSense that pops up, it tells you. Mid says, I want a character in the middle of a string. All right, there's left, there's right, which says give me the left three characters, the right one character, whatever. Mid goes right in the middle of the string any, to any position. All right, what is the string? Well, it's box one. That's what I'm looking inside of. The start is the count. Where do you want to look at it? Well, I want to look at the current position because my X is looping through the entire string, right? X is one to the total characters. So the start is, start looking right at X. Then the length is how many characters do you want to grab? Just one, just the current character. All right, so first it goes character one, character two, character three, and so on. All right, so that's being set in a variable called C. Now I can just check and see what C is, right? If C equals a plus, which is inside of quotes, because that's a string, then increment our plus found counter. Plus found equals plus found plus one. And that's it. That's how we count the number of pluses. All right? We got the length of the box in, in characters. Plus found, set our initial value to zero. Loop from 
x equals 1 to the total number of characters. So start here. Go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way down. There is a character at the end of this called a new line character. We'll talk about that in a second. So that's actually two characters. Well, that's a little more advanced. I'll go into that in a minute. All right, but figure there's extra characters at the end here. Okay. Then go c equals whatever position we're in. One character, right? That's what c is now. So c will start off first. It'll be an r. Then the next iteration of the loop will be another r. Then it'll be a 7, and so on. So each time that happens, I'm going to check and see if it's a plus. When we hit a plus, increment that counter. All right, let's see if it works. Boom, go. Look at that. Total care is 77. There are 77 total characters here. Plus found, three of them. One, two, three. So we just solved the first problem that we have to for Paul. I forgot who this was. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Okay. Now let's tackle the second part, which is actually a little more difficult. Let me change up the data set in here real quick. We're going to do XX and then hit count. Okay, two characters and no pluses were found. All right, if I go XX plus, there's three characters. Okay, now the default behavior for a text box here is if I hit enter, it goes to the next field. That's the default, okay? But when you uh, when you want to get an actual new line in here, you have to hit Control Enter in a regular text box. When you copy in stuff from like Notepad, it's already got these new line characters in it, but Control Enter, so if I go in here and go like this, Control Enter, that puts me on the next line. There's also a property you can change in the text box. Um, long text fields have this property already set for them. If you go to the other tab, there's Enter Key Behavior. It's either default or new line, all right? For here, I'm gonna go new line. So when I hit enter, it gives me a new line in the field here. Because otherwise, if you, got, if you got short text, like first name, last name, and so on, you hit enter, you wanna move to the next field. For, for memo fields, the default is memo, long text, same thing. I'm still in the habit of calling them memo. They used to be memo fields years ago. All right, so new line in field is the option here. All right, so now that we've done that, if I come in here and I type in XX, enter XX like that, all right, you can see that it moved me down to the next line. Now, if I hit count now, there's six characters there. Why Why is there six? Because a new line character is actually two characters. All right, there's a line feed and a carriage return. This goes back to, I don't know, this goes way, way back. In the, probably 80s and before. Now, how do you check for these carriage return new line thingies in there? Okay, well, you have to look for a CHR 10 and a CHR 13. What that means, that's a whole other class, but all we have to do is update our code in here and look for a specific character code. All right, character code 10 and character code 13. Either one of them will work just fine because they're it's a pair. They're always both together. This is a little more advanced. All right, I warned you, we're going to get into some, some pretty cool stuff today. Okay, so we've got a value for the number of pluses. Let's add another one out here so we can count the number of total lines. So copy, paste. All right, let's call this total line. Yeah, the label can say lines. <laughs> Actually, let's call it let's call it line count. Try to keep it singular. All right, let's call this line count. There we go. All right, so same as before, we'll initialize it. Line count equals zero, and I'm not going to capitalize it when I'm typing it in my VB code because then as soon as I move off the line, look at it capitalize itself. I've caught so many mistypings that way. All right, I'll let VB do the ca capitalization for me. All right, now in here, it's the same thing, but we're going to say if C equals CHR13. That's the new line or the carriage return. I don't remember which. There's, there's CHR10 and CHR13. All right, those are ASCII character codes. That's a whole different lesson. I'm not going to talk about those right now. Basically, it's code 13. All right, each, each letter has its own code. All right, like A is 65, B is 66, and so on. So CHR 13 is a carriage return or line, line carriage return or line fee, one of those two. Doesn't matter. That's that's irrelevant to the video. Okay. So if we have CHR 13, then my line count equals line count plus one. All right. That should give us the total number of lines minus one. That's a different story. We'll get that to that in just a second too. <laughs> There's a lot of little if-thens in this lesson. All right, save this. Let's close this whole form and reopen it. All right, hit the button. Boom. All right, oh, invalid use of null. Why would happen here? Debug. For x equals 1 to total character. Why? Total character is null. There's nothing in the box. Ah, we didn't do any error handling or any checking or any that kind of stuff. So if 
is null total care. I'm going to say or total care is empty because the user can blank it too. Then message box. Actually, I'm going to say, yeah, let's just message box it. Message box uh, box is empty. And then exit sub. All right, that means get out of dodge. All right, hit the button now. The box is empty. So we just handle that. We just handled it. Okay. Now let's put something in here and see if it works. XX, enter, XX, enter. Count the lines. Oh, box is empty. What happened? All right, I goofed. And I'm going to leave this in the video because I make mistakes too. A lot of the time, it's when I'm not paying attention. All right, and I want you to see what I did. Does anyone see the error? All right, why it thinks that the box is empty? Go ahead, take a second, pause the video if you have to. Find the error. I like to leave errors in my videos when I goof up because I wasn't paying attention. I was busy trying to be cool and talking to you guys. A, a lot of times, it's like, you know how when you can do something like, like, like swish a basket, right? And you can do it when you're by yourself a million times. So then as soon as someone's around, you're trying to show off or demonstrate something to someone else. You can't do it. You goof up. I do that same thing. I program like this stuff all day long. Right, but when I'm talking to you, I'm a little distracted, I'm, I'm trying to be entertaining, I miss stuff. And I like to leave these errors in my videos. All right, anybody see it? Okay, I'm looking at total care, which total care is the count of the box. What I need up here is box one. There's my goof. Okay, it took me half of a second to see it. <laughs> Once I got the error message. I'm, you're not perfect, that no one is, and you're not going to be able to have perfect code. So knowing how to find that stuff is, is important, and that's why I like to leave errors in the videos. Trust me, if I took all the errors out of all my videos, they'd be very, very short. <laughs> okay, hit the button. All right. So total care is six, because we got those two characters in there, right? Plus is found, and then line count is one. Why is line count only one? I see two lines there. Well... It's a behavior of access and how it handles text boxes. If I put extra lines at the end here, okay, and I hit the button, access automatically trims them. All right, I could hit enter, 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 enter six times. I'm down here now. If I hit count, as soon as I leave this box, access trims it. That's just a behavior of how access is. All right, if I go enter space, 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 and hit count, access trimmed it. See, it trims any, they're called white space characters, spaces, uh, the new line characters, that CHR 13 and 10, anything that's at the end there, it just chops it off. It thinks it's doing you a favor. So we can take that into consideration by just adding um, to our line count at the very end here. So we can just say line count equals line count plus one. All right, we're going to take that behavior into consideration. Now there are two lines. Okay. If you don't type anything in that's multi-line, if I just put some stuff in like this and hit line count, we want to see a one there, right? Now, we've done everything that, what's his name? Paul. <laughs> Paul needs, I'm sorry, Paul. I'm horrible with remembering names. All right. We've done everything that Paul needs. Hit count. Let's verify it. Seven and three pluses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And three pluses. Perfect. Now, if I wasn't taking my time goofing around, we could have probably wrote this code in about five minutes. But since I was goofing around and showing you kind people how to program, it took us what? We're at about 20 minutes right now? Okay, so that is how you do some really cool stuff in VB. And this is just one example. I use for loops all the time. This is one of the most popular loops in Visual Basic. I use, actually use while loops more because while loops, you don't have to know what you're looping from and to, right? You can loop from one to whatever. And then inside the loop itself, you can figure out when to stop. That's a whole separate video. I cover while loops in my full classes, of course. If you want to learn how to program, I've got a whole series of developer courses for Visual Basic and for Microsoft Access. Okay, I, I kind of went overboard for the extended cut. I, it's about another 50 minutes worth of video. I went kind of crazy today. Um, I just kept finding more cool stuff to do. First, we made a count care function. All right, I took that little block of code that we used to count the characters inside of uh, a string and we made a full function out of it and not only can you just search for a single character but you could search for a block of characters and how many times it appears that's kind of cool and then i'm like why don't we build something so we can match up parentheses in a bit of code i see this all happen all the time i get it where i've got you know mismatched parentheses or square brackets for your sql or, or anything 
All right, for you math people, you might have to do like you know curly braces or whatever, or, or C programming. And so I figured this would be a good opportunity. I, I teach arrays in that lesson and uh, rich text fields and how to put color in your text boxes using HTML code. And uh, and it's it just, it's a neat lesson. So if you're interested in learning more and getting into some more programming, uh, it's for my members only extended cut. How do you become a member? All you gotta do is click on that join button right there. You'll get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos. There's, uh, I don't know, a lot, there's a lot of them up there right now so far, 12, 13. I've been doing this for only about two or three weeks. Um, if you click the join button, you'll see all the different levels that are available. But don't worry, I'm still gonna keep making the free tech help videos. They're gonna be around forever. I love teaching you guys stuff for free. But make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell, that way you'll get email notifications whenever I release something new. Stop by my website, visit the Access Forum, and make sure you click on the little Show More link down below the video, down where you see it says PC Learning Zone Computer Training. Go down below that, you'll see Show More. Click on that, and it always opens up. I put lots more links in there for all the different things that I talked about. Like in today's class, we talked about concatenation, we talked about for loops, we talked about string functions like len and mid. I've got links down below this video for all those different lessons. Some of them are free on YouTube, some of them are on my website. All right, YouTube does their, their best to kind of hide it. That show more link isn't very visible at all. They should at least make it like blue and underlined or something. I don't know. <laughs> and whenever you're looking for something, you can always go to my website and search on the, the uh, topic index because people always ask me, well, I didn't know if you covered this. Well, there's, the, there's how you get to the access index. It's on a drop-down box. Now, if you haven't yet watched my access level one beginner class, do that. It's three hours of really good material, all the basics of Microsoft Access, especially if you're new to it. And if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. And if you become a member of my channel, all member le all membership levels get level two for free. And then if you want to go beyond that, level three, four, five, and so on, you can get a discount on those as well if you're a member. Want to see your question answered in one of these videos? There's the page, Tech Help. I've also got a directory to all of my Tech Help videos that I put online there as well. There's also a playlist on my YouTube channel, but it's easier to find on my website. You can also email me. There's my email address, but I prefer to use the Tech Help page. I get lots and lots of emails, so it's better if you drop it on the Tech Help page. There's all my other stuff, Facebook, Twitter, but I'm mostly active on my website and on YouTube. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time. Keep learning.